Hi, this is Alan Percy. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing for Audio Codes, and we're here at Microsoft Ignite. I'm here with Mary Beth Kirk with uh, Lynn Energy. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah, well, great, great. <coughs> so we talked yesterday during our uh, Circle of Excellence event about uh, the migration that Lynn Energy uh, made from uh, some a legacy environment over to Microsoft Link, and uh, of course in the future, Skype for Business. Uh, and let's share that story with, uh, I guess, our, our listeners. So let's start out with, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and, and Lynn Energy. So again, my name is Mary Beth Kirk, and I've been with Lynn Energy for about three and a half years. I have a strong telecom background. I work for another vendor for a very long time and had a relationship with Lynn as their third party support yep. and was lucky enough to get on with them when they started their initial link deployment. And so Lynn is an oil and gas company headquartered in Houston, Texas. They um, are a growth through acquisition company. So okay. most of our, our growth and, and expansion comes through acquisition. And uh, so that leads to rapid growth and quick turnaround. I so bet. Bet. yeah, when those deals come down, it's, it's very imperative that we are able to bring those, onboard those users quickly, assimilate them into the Lin way of life and you know, make it as easy as possible. It's our, our goal to make that transition easier because it's always difficult when you go through an acquisition, especially from the far end. You know? right. So we wanna try and make that easy on those guys. Good, good, yeah. okay. So we talked yesterday about um, your migration, and yes. one of the things we, we talked about is that uh, Lynn started out in a PBX environment uh, yes. in Houston. So share that story a little bit. Yeah, so Lynn was a very PBX-centric uh, shop. They had uh, several different things. They had some Mitel PBXs. They had some Cisco Call Manager. They had some you know, Walmart specials, little Panasonic two-line phones that we had out in our field offices. Through acquisition, we've come across several other different vendors, and we've had to, to deal with those. you know. But initially, with the, uh, with the PBXs that we had in place, we wanted to be able to move into the link environment, but we still wanted to be able to support internal four-digit dialing for our users, mm -hmm. either in the same office building or at our field locations. And that was very important to our senior management. They were very right. supportive of our link deployment from the beginning, which we're very fortunate about that, but they wanted to maintain that four-digit dialing. And so that's where audio codes came into play for us and helped us get that accomplished. Right, so now here we are, you've sort of got these aging PBXs, you want to move over to this link environment. You know, what are the steps that are involved in that sort of transition process then? So uh, just quickly, you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to do that, you know, those PBXs were costly to maintain. We did not have a person on staff that was able to help us with that. So we were paying time and material to our third party vendor. Mm -hmm. You know, we were ready, they were nearing end of life. And, uh, you know, we just had a rack full of hardware and to be able to virtualize that and go into a link environment with some, of course, you know, gateways, but much smaller, you know, two, one U, two U, something like that, as compared to an entire rack full of hardware, was very appetizing to Lynn. So when we initially uh, started that project, we engaged a, you know, a Microsoft Gold partner to help us with that, which was very important. Um, I would, I would recommend that definitely to get somebody trusted to help you with those uh, those initial steps. Make sure that management is behind you. Again, we were very fortunate that internally management was supportive and they were excited about Link. Right. And we're, able, we're ready to finance that project. Right. Uh, when you have to fight that battle on the side, that's a whole other issue, but they were very supportive of that. So uh, we were very uh, aware of what our environment was. We had strong people in, on the infrastructure side that mm -hmm. knew exactly what our environment was like, and I think that's pretty key, what it was gonna take to run voice over IP on our existing infrastructure. And so um, slowly but surely we, just, we decided that we were gonna pilot our program at our corporate office. Rather than go to one of our field locations, we chose right. to do that at the corporate office level. And rather than migrate you know, 800 users all in one week. Mm -hmm. We chose to do that at a very staged deployment phase where we took one floor at a time and migrated those people on a weekend over to Link. Again, we had to maintain that four digit dialing, so I will have somebody, you know, on one floor that has a, a Mitel PBX phone and another floor has Link phones, yep. and they need to be able to contact each other just through four digit dialing. Right. And that's where what we call the drop and insert architecture comes in, which is with the uh, the gateway initially right. sat between the the PSTN lines and, of course, the uh, the PBX. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So we utilize the median one thousand, mm -hmm. two of them actually as upstream gateways between our Mitel PBXs and our PSTN. Mm -hmm. We were able to take those T PRIs and put them directly into the gateway I and mean, do that manipulation through the gateways rather than through the Mitel PBX, which was actually easier, technically speaking. 
And then when we were ready for the decommission process, several months later, it made it very easy to decommission those PBXs and just move on with our gateways and then turn those into SBAs right. and support the link project. Right. Yeah. So then you made the migration, you moved uh, most, or I guess all of your employees off the PBXs and now uh, you're supporting Link. Let's talk a little bit about the survivability strategy. We talked about that too. Sure. So after we uh, initially had those PRIs connected to our M1000s, we eventually in our Houston and Oklahoma City offices migrated to SIP trunks and we moved those into our data centers and we put in M3000 session border controllers. Right. So with that, we're able to really provide for disaster recovery and survivability. And it's imperative to land, especially in Houston, where we have the threat of weather and you know hurricanes and stuff like that, right. that, we're, that we're able to handle that and roll over our services to Oklahoma City and still provide a high level of service to our, to our end users. So through those SBCs and through some, some SIP trunking from a local provider, we're able to do that. Should those tr services go down, we fail over automatically to our other site and our users are none the wiser. That's great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been a great story, uh, the migration so far, and at this point, uh, you've, uh, it sounds like you've achieved your goal of uh, moving off the PBXs, and, and the next step then is, all right, is uh, Skype for Business. So, um, you know, share some thoughts maybe on what's, the, what's next with that. So we're testing, we're currently testing the Skype for Business client. We are uh, still decommissioning our 2010 environment. Our users on the front end are on a 2013, mm -hmm. um, and we have a test group evaluating the Skype for Business. I've been running it for about a month, and I love it, so I'm excited for our users to get that in right. their hands. I anticipate we'll probably be doing that probably end of Q3 probably for us. Okay. So I'm excited to bring that to our, to our desktops. Sure. So um, the fantastic story about uh, the migration. Um, you know, one of the things um, you know, people always want to know is, is there a way that they can sort of follow you and see how your migration continues from this point on? So you share with us uh, maybe your Twitter handle and, uh, and how people could follow you along there. Absolutely, I'd be uh, welcome to answer any questions and, and talk to people. Uh, you can contact me directly at Lynn or on LinkedIn. My Twitter handle is at ditch the PBX because Lynn is very proud to say that there is no longer any PBXs in our environment. And personally, I take a lot of pride in that. So at ditch the PBX on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Mary Beth Kirk or you can uh, also look online and at lynnenergy.com and find me that way as well. That's great, that's great. Well, thanks again for spending a few minutes with us and sharing your story. Yes, sir, thank you. All right.